Kontuniki. These are small spiders that cause three types of reactions in people. The first reaction is panic, followed by fear and rarely curiosity. And I also belong to that small group of people who are curious about Tegenaria spiders. In today's video, once again, I'll try to introduce you to these very common and very disliked spiders, which very, 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 and for the sixth time already, I think, can be found very often both in our homes and outside them. We'll take a closer look at them and see if they're really that scary and if there's really anything to be afraid of. Well, it's a little bit scary and a little bit not. You're not going to bite me, are you? And now a cheeky little break to show you what's new in the store. And the news is that we've got new desk pads, which you can use for your mouse or keyboard. There are five new designs, four sizes, and we've also got new frames with insects. Pretty cool. Uh, the link will be in the video description. Now, the Teganaria spider. Before we start, I'll answer your question about where I got this spider from. Well, if you watched the previous video, you know that it came with me from a trip to southern Roswell, and I shamelessly brought it straight from the forest. So that spider was hibernating there, and I took it with me. So that wasn't very nice of me, but it seems like it suited him, because now he's eating normally. I gave him these little running cockroaches, so it's not too bad for him here. And uh, since he's here, uh, since it's a Polish spider, and even more, since it's a very popular Polish spider, I thought we could make a dedicated episode for him, just like I did last year. So let's get started. Tegenaria. Uh, Tegenaria is a name that refers to several, if not a dozen, different spider species, rather than just a single spider. Tegenaria can be rural, forest, domestic, bigger or smaller. Tegenarias are grouped into two genera, Tegenaria and Eratigena. There are numerous species within these genera. These are scientific names, but in Polish, these spiders are simply called Tegenarias. And this particular specimen belongs to the species Eratigena atrica, which is the giant house spider. Probably the best known and also the least liked of all Tegenarias, because it is a synanthropic species. What does that mean? Unfortunately for us, especially those with arachnophobia or who are simply disgusted by spiders, this spider is commonly found in cities, houses, villages, and basically wherever people live. That's exactly what synanthropy means. Here's a question for 100 points. Is this spider venomous? Yes, indeed, it is venomous. Just like 99% of all spider species that live on Earth, it has venomous fangs equipped with a channel through which the venom flows. And can such a spider bite us? Well, of course it can bite. And what's more, the bite can be quite unpleasant. Because, yeah, first of all, there, there's the venom, which acts neurotoxically and causes a small necrosis. And secondly, from what I've heard, people bitten by Tegenaria have reported that these bites heal poorly, they fester, and overall it's a mess. So, I don't recommend getting bitten, but for a spider like this to bite you, well, honestly, you'd really have to try. If I pressed it against my skin, it would bite me. But otherwise, there's nothing to fear. It just sees me as a surface. Nothing more. As you can see. All in all, is it venomous? Yes. Can it bite? Yes. But we won't die, our arm or leg won't fall off, our brain won't end up on the wall. That's how Muslims have fun. A little break for some fun facts. Fun fact number one. Here before you is a house spider, the main character of today's episode, and a tarantula, my genia, which is one of my biggest spiders. She is? Well, that's how she is. She's not scary. I mean, she's a little scary. No, no, don't go, don't go. The poor thing got scared. These spiders differ from each other in practically every way. Apart from the fact that both of them are spiders, well, you see, it's like night and day. Here's an interesting fact about the lifespan of this kind of Tegenaria spider. Hey, I'll give you a little reference here and tell you, for example, how long a Tegenaria like this can live. If you guessed that it could live 15, 20 years, you'd be right. These are very long-lived spiders. If I take good care of her, she can easily live another 15 years with me. These are animals with a very slow metabolism, and that's why they live so long. So, what would you guess? How long does a house spider live? Just look at the size difference. This is one of my biggest spiders, and as for the house spider, everyone knows what a house spider looks like. If you had to guess, how long does a house spider typically live? Months or years? So take a guess, right there in front of your television phone, laptop, wherever you're sitting now, how long will it live? And I'll give you the answer in a moment. Ready? All right. It turns out that even though it's a true spider, meaning it's a bit more developed than tarantulas and, according to some, shouldn't live longer than, I don't know, three, four months, it can actually live up to four years. Yes, it can actually live for four years, which means it can survive three, four winters hibernating normally, and I think that's pretty amazing. Mayflies, those very delicate insects that we can find near streams, sometimes live only for several hours and then die. Uh, and such a small spider can live for four years. All right, let's put the cocoons aside. And now for fun fact number two, fun fact number two. 
This particular species of house spider, Eratigena atrica, also known as the giant house spider, is normally found in Europe and a bit in Asia, and that's its natural range of occurrence. However, if we looked hard enough, we would also find these house spiders in North America, and that's because in 1929 it was accidentally introduced there, with the first recorded sighting of this spider on Vancouver Island. That's an interesting fact. And now we're coming back. As for its appearance, I know, this spider looks terrifying, it has long, thin, slightly hairy legs, it's black, it moves quickly, so overall it's a nightmare for arachnophobes, and I'm aware of that. However, it's also worth knowing that this spider basically doesn't do any harm to humans in terms of its presence. So apart from the possibility of biting, it's not a pest at all. What's more, it can help us get rid of other, more unwanted house guests. Spiders are generally good buddies and our friends, unless they're the most unwanted house guests. If we really don't want a spider running around our apartment, that's bad. Then we can just take it outside and it'll be fine. Just by looking at the spider, it's actually a female, and she looks just like you see, right? She's not that big, and may not be fully grown yet, but it's hard to say for sure. Anyway, she's not huge, and honestly, I've seen much, much bigger house spiders, especially males, whose leg span was twice as big as hers. But still, for Polish standards, let's be honest, that's quite a spider. If you just measured the body, I think it's easily one and a half centimeters. What else? The spider belongs to a family called Funnel Weavers, or Agilenidae Agilenidae, I think that's right. Their name comes from the fact that they make funnels, and they make these funnels out of web, of course. So if you find a web, I don't know, somewhere in the corner of an attic, or between cinder blocks or bricks, and there's a funnel, it's very, very likely that this funnel belongs to some spider. I'm not saying it's a house spider, but some spider from this family. And house spiders basically have a very similar technique for building their nests. That is, and you could actually see this in the previous video, in those crevices between the bark there were normal funnels, and in those funnels these little guys were sitting. And if you've ever heard that how spiders crawl into people's mouths while they're sleeping, that's not true, right? Relax, such things simply don't occur. Statistics claim people eat a certain number of spiders in their sleep over a lifetime, but those numbers are likely fabricated since it would be difficult to verify. What else? Oh, and if you were to come across a spider like that in your house right now, it actually wouldn't be completely normal, because now, since it's winter, those spiders should be hibernating, right? Like bears, they prepare a sleeping place, hibernate during winter, and wake up in the warmer spring. So the fact that this spider is running around here right now is a bit out of its natural order, because I shamelessly woke it up from its winter sleep by taking it from the forest. But if something like this actually happens, like you move something in the attic, and a spider like this appears and starts running around, don't panic. You can just take the spider outside and it will go back to sleep, okay? Such a spider will just continue its winter sleep and nothing will really happen. Now that we've covered the basic info about the house spider, maybe let's talk about something for that small group of people who find house spiders fascinating. You've asked me many times how you can keep a house spider. And as strange as it may sound, it is possible. You can actually keep a spider like that. You know, if your mom doesn't let you have a tarantula, then just get a house spider from the forest, and it'll be pretty cool too. A spider like that doesn't need much, just occasional water and some food. That's essentially the basics. And you can keep a spider in a box like this. Uh, decorating it or not doesn't matter, the spider will manage just fine. Seriously, if it lives in a corner, do you think it has, I don't know, moss, ferns, roots, and so on? No, it doesn't. So that's the basics, and normally the house spider, if it has enough food and water, it will survive and be happy. So if you've ever had this strange dream in your head, to keep a house spider as a pet, which by the way, I totally understand, well, it's no problem. You find a house spider, put it in a box, give it ventilation, give it food, and the spider lives. And that's about it, my friends. I hope that in this wintry, windy time, I've managed to share at least a bit of some cool knowledge with you. If you encounter a house spider, don't panic. It's normal to have a fear or phobia of spiders, and for some, it's difficult to overcome. But try to remember that spiders really don't mean us any harm. They're actually more afraid of us than we are of them. They help make the world a place with fewer of those even worse pests like, I don't know, flies. I prefer spiders over flies. With that, we're ending this video. See you next time. Bye!